What's going on traders? Welcome to another weekly Forex forecast. Let me know in the comments down below what pairs you're watching this week and where you think the markets are headed. We're going to break it down in this video, so stay tuned and hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about supply and demand trading. Added 2600 longs and they actually added 2300 shorts, so this move up could be short lasted here. Um, one thing to consider is this weekly area of, of supply has now been removed, which has left this weekly area of demand right here, uh, which I could see broken because on the monthly time frame we do have some sort of supply right here or selling. I would I'd prefer to call that selling, uh, just because it's a move away. It didn't really remove anything at all, so to me it's not a very strong zone, but it absolutely could hold up price. So I'd be very careful um, buying the U.S. dollar right now. But and on, especially since on the daily time frame here, we are reacting off of daily supply as well. So if you are going to buy the U.S. dollar, the best sign that it is going to go up is probably to wait for this uh, daily area of supply to be removed. Uh, so it would have to break 93.545 before I would be considering uh, going long. All right, on to Euro USD. The past week, they didn't really do much with their longs. They got rid of 700. But they actually ordered, uh, added 18,000 shorts, so that's pretty significant. Uh, could be part of that rally down that we're seeing now. So it's kind of the opposite picture of the U.S. dollar here. If I'm going to be shorting, I'd want to see this removed. But uh, we are daily demand is in control, so you did have some confirmation here. Um, it's the power of supply and demand. Look, so much demand down here that um, it didn't really like didn't come down. I couldn't even come down and touch it. So. Uh, he had more confirmation in here, had his own here, but I do expect price to come down. This is technically a four-hour confirmation trade inside that daily demand, but I probably wouldn't take it based on the fact that this uh, trend line is still holding. Um, what I'm really looking for, if I'm going to go long, basically what I'm going to look to do to go long is to wait for this trend line and the zone to be removed and then buy pullbacks. And then if I'm going to be going short, I'm going to be waiting for this uh, daily demand to be removed. Then I'll look for short. So I'm basically right now waiting for the uh, for the large institutions to you know open the door that they're going to be going into. They're either going to be going up or they're going to be going down, and I'm just waiting for them to show me. All right, looking at Aussie U.S. dollar. The past week, the banks added 7,000 longs, but they added 1,200 shorts as well. Uh, the call reports for the Aussie don't ever really show much. One thing to consider is we are at this daily area of demand slash now it's become basically a support and resistance area as well. So I am not buying this. Uh, I'm not selling either. Uh, for me to look to go long, I'm going to have to see that trend line removed. And same thing with the euro. Like I just said, I'm going to have to see the demand be removed as well. Um, it, it is looking like we might move to the upside though. Uh, looking at the four hour time frame here, uh, we do have the break of this trend line which created demand down here. So could see a reaction off that. Uh, I kind of, if we do see a reaction, I kind of doubt uh, that it will hold, but not too much going on the Aussie dollar. I haven't traded the Aussie dollar in a long, long, long time. I think since last year. So there's not too much uh, going on right now on the Aussie dollar. All right, looking at the British pound, the past week the banks got rid of 4,000 uh, longs and they actually got rid of 7,000 shorts. So it looks like they are reducing uh, their position size, but their long percentage has increased. Uh, looking at the chart here, we have a nice trend line down. I actually missed a trade right here that uh, I talked about on the live stream. And uh, by the way, if you're watching this right now, I am. I do plan on going live every single day for all of April uh, for the New York session. So make sure you stay around for that. Uh, I go over the markets, I give little tips and answer questions and all that stuff and hang out for a couple hours. So hopefully you guys can like that and if you want, stop by. Um, so what I am expecting to happen since this area is tested and we are lined up with this trend line, I am breaking. I am expecting this to break. Whether or not we break up uh, up here and react off of there or we push up higher, we're going to have to watch the US dollar uh, to see. But if we do get a reaction and it does come up here, I, I'm probably not <clears throat> uh, too interested in that area. I would probably just uh, wait on my toes on the daily time frame. Uh, as, far as, as far as like the four hour goes, we do have an uptrend here, but we have overhead supply, which this is really a daily area of supply. And this was the test. So I'd be very careful buying or selling right now. To me, I'm just waiting 
Uh, it's a huge part of being a Forex trader is just waiting on your toes for the opportunities that you see best and the ones that fit the best. So that's what I'm waiting for. <clears throat> and also, if you're interested, check out uh, the Patreon if you want to track all my zones with me and become a member. There's two options, as you can see. Um, so check that out. It definitely helps and helps you kind of see how I draw the supply and demand zones. All right, on to USD JPY. The car report show they added 3,000 longs and they got rid of 2,800 shorts. Uh, in the past, you know, month, the, basically the past like two months, three months, they've been adding to their longs. And as you can see, the price has been going up. Uh, but I would be very careful because of, we are in weekly slash uh, monthly supply right here. As you can see, this is on right here. So be very, very careful. Uh, buying the USDN. If you do, I would be taking profits somewhat quickly or trailing your stop loss quick. Um, one thing I'm in, one area I'm interested in, I mentioned this on the live stream too, so that's why it's nice to stop by. I talk about these things as well, but I mentioned that I am interested in this area on the daily time frame. But what I'm going to be doing is looking for that one hour confirmation in there. Uh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you're new to my channel or you're new to supply and demand, check out my. Confirmation trading 101 video is like one of my last 10 videos. Uh, it's been doing pretty well. Uh, I think a lot of people liked it and that you get you learn a lot from that video. I basically break down exactly what I'm going to be looking for inside of this daily area of demand if we if it does come to that back to it. Um, and I don't plan on uh, shoring the USDN right now. Basically, all I'm waiting for is price to come back down here. And you know, it might not or it might take a few days. So I'm just going to be sitting on my toes. All right, on to USD CAD. The past week, the banks added 20, uh, 260 longs and added 1,600 shorts as well. As you can see, we reacted very nicely off of this daily supply. I took a trade in that area. I broke it all down on the live stream. So that's another reason to tune in is I will be breaking down all my trades in the live stream as well. Uh, I took a nice one-hour confirmation in there. Um, so daily, uh, daily supply is in control. There's really no demand for a while down here. So my plan on the USD CAD is I'm going to be switching over to the one, uh, the four hour chart. And what I'm waiting for is hopefully price will come down here, make a new low and break this demand where then I will be shorting the pullback to the zone that was responsible for breaking that trend. And, you know, if price does, the US dollar does get stronger and price breaks through, then then, you know, I'll start looking at uh, other opportunities. Um, but if it, that does happen, I'm going to have to wait uh, for this daily momentum shift to even happen for me to start to consider to go long. So uh, it's either it's either we continue to go short or we're gonna, it's, it's going to be the waiting game to uh, go long on USD CAD. All right, on to USD CHF. The past week, they added 2,200 longs and they added 3,600 shorts. Their overall percentage is 58% short. Uh, clearly, that's been a change because price has been moving up. Uh, we are reacting off this daily area of supply. I'm not going to call that removed yet. I want to see a few more candles to see if we can uh, pierce through this through this uh, zone. Um, on the weekly time frame, kind of similar to the U.S. dollar index, we do have the break of this weekly supply. So I'm kind of interested in taking a taking a stab at that zone and looking for like a four-hour momentum shift in that weekly area of demand. Uh, we'll just kind of have to see what the U.S. dollar is uh, doing at that time. On the four-hour chart, uh, price is sideways. So, you know, if price does come up here like that and break this zone, then that whole daily zone that we had would be broken as well. And then, you know, looking for, for longs on the upside is totally uh, reasonable. So that's what I'm waiting for. And if not, if price does come down here and start reacting, then I might actually look for some shorting opportunities on like a one hour chart, maybe even a 15 minute chart if I'm uh, live on YouTube. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm waiting for on the Swiss. All right, on to gold. The car reports show they added 600 longs and they added 7,000 shorts. Uh, their overall percentage is still 73% long and we are starting to see that reaction off of this daily area of uh, demand. So we do have a uh, daily demand zone in control so i will be changing that to in control so technically looking for like a one hour uh zone off of there could be somewhat valid and we also on the four hour time frame uh, we also have this four hour demand zone right here uh, because it removed that uh, trend line so 
you know what I could see happen on gold as we react somewhat off this supply and push back down to here and I might actually be interested in uh, going long at this four hour demand I'm gonna have to wait to see uh, how the market is reacting off of that first maybe look for like a 15 minute confirmation trade in that four hour area and you know the whole reasoning for that is because the location is good we are reacting off of this uh, demand this trend line is being tested and almost removed now so I think going long is uh, somewhat reasonable in gold right now all right on to crude oil the last week they added they got rid of 11,000 longs and 20,000 shorts they also got rid of uh, what I'm interested in I think I talked about it last week it just might take a while I'm gonna be looking for a one-hour momentum shift in this daily area of supply right now to, to for a move to the downside and you know if I'm wrong and I get stopped out or I don't get the confirmation then you know price is probably headed up so then I'll start to look for longs on oil um, yeah I just right now I'm sitting on my toes I don't want to be sh I don't want to be shorting right now especially since all the time frames are kind of uh, out of sequence right now this is this is a sideways market I don't like to really trade in sideways markets um, but it is looking like on the four hour we are headed back up to this area so that's kind of what I'm waiting for in oil. I'm just uh, sitting on my toes. So a lot of sitting on my on uh, on my toes this week in the market, but I think that's what uh, separates the good traders from the bad. So hopefully this video uh, helped you and you see what I'm uh, talking about uh, for all these markets. All right, everyone. Thanks again for watching this week's Forex forecast. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button as well if you don't mind. I really appreciate all the support. Let me know in the comments down below what pairs you're looking at this week and you know maybe we can get in touch and you can send me a chart and let me know what you're looking at. I always like looking at charts. So with that being said, let's have a great trading week and let's make some money. Cheers.